All right. So today, let's actually let's not talk about today. Let's talk about yesterday. Our last lesson we learned uh, about long division. So taking taking a uh, you know big old polynomial here, a hunk of algebra stuff, and dividing it by it looks like what we did yesterday was a binomial, and we're going to continue with that. But instead of doing full out long division where we, you know, this reminded what we did, we, instead of writing it out like this, x minus 3 goes into so instead of doing that, which took a little while, I mean we had to put numbers up here and then times this to equal this and that and that was just, you know, pretty soon we're down here doing this problem. There's a uh, kind of a little trick method called synthetic division. And it's going to pretty much achieve the same result, only much cleaner, much faster. So um, let's do this exact problem. And uh, we'll do it using synthetic division. So in other words, we are going to not do this today. We're going to show you a little faster way. All right, so first off, this method only works if the number in front of x here, here's our divisor right here. Hold on. Here's our divisor right here. And as long as this number is just a 1 right here, then we're going to be able to use synthetic division. And step 1 is, if it's x minus 3, then we're actually going to consider the divisor to be just 3. So we're going to write a 3 here. If this was a if this was plus here, then we'd put a negative here. If it's minus here, we're putting a plus here. And then, a little fancy, we're going to make a big old L, something like this. And we're going to take the coefficients of this of the polynomial that we're going to divide into. We're going to take all the coefficients, 3, negative 2, 3, negative 4. We're going to ignore all the variables, all the x cubes and x squares and all that. We're just going to focus on the values themselves. And we're going to write those in order right here. 3, negative 2, 3, negative 4. And now we're set up to uh, do this new method, this little trick method of division. And here we go. First thing you do is we're going to take this first number inside of the L shape thing. We're going to take this number and we're going to drop it down here. So we're just going to write that number right here. Then we multiply 3 times 3 and put that number right here. So that's 9. Then we add these two numbers together and we get 7. And then we do it again. We multiply 3 times 7 and put that number here. That's 21. Then we add. We get 24. Then we multiply again. 3 times 24. We put that number here. That's 72. And then we add. And negative 4 plus 72 is 68. And believe it or not, we're done. Sort of. And there's no more math to do. We actually figured this thing out. What happens here now is the result down here is the answer to this division problem that we would have done the long way. All these numbers right here represent what would have been up in here. This is the remainder. This is just the constant or the number. This is going to be the first power term and this is going to be squared. It started as a third power. When we divide by a first power here we end up with a squared answer. We would have put a squared thing here. So that's this thing. So all we do now is we rewrite it. It's 3x squared plus 7x plus 24 plus the remainder. So that's 68 over x minus 3. And we're done. That's called synthetic division. Basically just doing it really fast and ignoring all the variables and then you put them back in at the end. Just put all your x's back in at the end of the problem.
right, let's do it again. Same thing. We're gonna di we're dividing. I wrote it a little differently just to mix it up a little bit. We're still taking this and we're dividing it by this. And so if this is x plus two, then we're actually gonna put negative two on the outside of our synthetic division system. We're gonna make a big old L, and we're gonna write all these numbers, all the coefficients of these numbers, the numbers in front of the variable. We're gonna write all those coefficients in coefficients inside of that L. So there they are. And so here we go. It's going to be 1, negative 3, negative 5, 2, negative 16. And then once again, all we're doing is we're going to take this number right here, drop it down here. This gets everything started right here by taking that number, dropping it down there. So we're going to put a 1 right there. Then we multiply this times that and we get negative 2 right here. Then we add these two numbers together. Negative 3 and negative 2 makes negative 5. And then we start over. We just keep doing that over and over. You practice this a few times, you get very fast at it. This is 10. This is a 5. This is negative 10. This is negative 8. And then we get positive 16. And we get 0. Hey, look at that. No remainder. That's going to come in handy on a lot of problems when you get that zero at the end. We'll be talking about that a lot later. But for this problem, that shows that there's no remainder. Remember, the last thing is always the remainder. This is just the number or the constant. This is x. This is x squared. This is x to the third. It started as x to the fourth. We divided by one a first power, so it's going to shrink our answer down one power. So that's why this is third squared x number remainder. Answer to this problem is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5x minus 8. No remainder. Answer. Synthetic division. Let's do it again. This time we're going to have x cubed plus 1 divided by x minus 1. And this one's a little different. There's definitely a reason to put this one on here and you know show you some different things. The same idea, we're gonna it's we're gonna still use synthetic division. Um, since this is x minus 1, we're gonna put positive 1 on the outside of our bracket. We're gonna make a big L. But this time, super important in synthetic division, as we're, writing, as we're writing the numbers that go here, we have to cover all the different powers of x. So we have an x to the third, and this thing jumps just to a number, just to plus one. But there's an x squared in there, and there's an x in there that we don't see. Those, the numbers in front of those, since they are not there, are zero. So we have to, you will not get this right if you don't do it this way. So it's going to be 1, and then 0, 0, 1. Let's talk about that one more time. This is 1x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 1. And if you think about it, if you don't put those zeros there, how would this problem know that you had a third power if you just put you know, one, one, as your only, if you just took the one and one and put it there, one, one, this wouldn't be a third power uh, situation right here. So this is, remember, this is always the number at the end. This is x, this is x squared, this is x cubed. Now the synthetic division problem knows what's going on. That was a weird way to say that, but kind of made sense. Okay, here we go. So just drop down the one, multiply these two numbers together right here, and you'll get 1, add them, you get 1, multiply, 1 times 1 is 1, add them, you get 1, multiply them, you get 1, add them, you get 2. And that's it. The uh, answer to this problem, remember this is the remainder, so this is the number, the constant, this is the x, this is the x squared. It was x cubed. We're dividing by a first power. That's going to shrink the power down to squared. So final answer, 
is x squared plus x plus 1 plus 2 over x minus 1. All right, next I'm going to show you a, I think, a pretty neat rule. And so just, I'm, you might want to pause the video, or I'll, I'll kind of wait for a second here, but I want you to write this down first. It'll make a lot more sense after I do this example. Um, so I'm not even going to talk about it yet. I'll come back and talk about it after I do an example. And the example... What I'm going to do is, let's say we had a function f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 7. And instead of asking you to divide either synthetic division, long division, whatever, this time I just want you to find f of 3. So normally when we do that, I mean, the most simple way to do that is we would take this 3 and we would plug it in for x in this function and we do all the math and stuff and we would get an answer. And that works great. But since we just learned synthetic division, let's try something else. Let's actually take that 3 that we're supposed to plug in there and let's use it as our divisor for synthetic division. So I'm writing a 3 here. I'm going to make my big L. And then I'm going to put the numbers inside the L, which are 2, negative 3. Notice that there's no x term right here. So we're going to need to put a 0 there. And then we'll put the 7. So here's the 0. Here's the 7. And even though it didn't say synthetic division, you'll see in the end here what's going on. I'm going to do synthetic division on this thing. Drop down the 2, multiply, 3 times 2 is 6, add, you get 3, 3 times 3 is 9, add, you get 9, and then 3 times 9 is 27, and 27 plus 7 is 34. Now they didn't ask us to divide, so we don't, you know, as far as our answer goes, we could, nobody really cares about this whole thing. But now let's talk about this rule, this remainder theorem. I'm going to, I wrote it a little bit fancy, but I'm going to say it a little less fancy. Notice the remainder in this problem is that 34 right there. It turns out that when you're using synthetic division or even just regular long division, whatever the remainder is, is also what you would have got if you had taken that number 3 and plugged it into the function and evaluated the function at 3. That's kind of crazy that that works that way, but it does. And I'll show you on the next page. All right, so this last one, or this last little demonstration here, I just went ahead and wrote it all out because it's something you definitely know how to do, just plug in numbers in. Um, but you'll see all I did here was show you that if I took that same problem from the last page and plugged in the 3, just flat out put in the 3 everywhere and worked out all the math, I would get 34. And that was the remainder when we divided. So I just, it's just a demonstration to show you that this remainder theorem really does work. The remainder you get when you divide is the same as if you had taken that number that you're dividing by and just plugged it into the function. We can explore maybe someday why that works, but for now, just enjoy that it does work. It's a different way to evaluate a function. All right, um, do your homework, work hard, be nice. See you soon.